Welcome back to the shed. So, today I want to go through cylinder heads. They are without doubt the most important part of your engine for power output. After your turbo and pistons and con rods and so on. Anyway, can't understate how much these affect the output of your engine. Um, a standard head, this one, given they look similar, don't they, from there? They look about the same, to be honest. A standard head on a Metro Turbo yields about 90 horsepower. Given that absolutely the same everything, a modified head will give you 20, 30 more horsepower. A properly modified head. Right, let's have a look, shall we? Okay, let's look at these heads, shall we? So this one here is a standard 1275 head. Uh, that would be the 12G940 casting. It's absolutely standard on most late model uh, minis, 1275s, Rovers, yeah. Standard issue and incredibly um, throttled. You'll see in a second the, the ports are tiny on the things. This one here is a modified 12G940 casting. Um, has been modified specifically for forced induction via uh, MED in Nuneaton. It's uh, technically called the uh, Forced Induction Special. I'm not sure if they're doing it anymore, but uh, yeah, damn good head and a bad grand's worth. Let's have a closer look underneath. Okay, we'll start with the underside of the uh, the blocks. Given they're both used heads, uh, this has a very little usage since it was built. This one is well, it's an old head. It's dirty. It's manky, but it works. It doesn't have any issues. So, first off, valves themselves. Bigger ones are induction valves. Now, let me just get my numbers out. Uh, right, so, number wise, MED head, 36 millimeter intake valves, 32 millimeter exhaust valves, versus standard, 33 millimeter intake, 29 millimeter exhaust. Big difference there. Next off, the chamber itself. Now you notice the uh, sort of heart shape of this. Apparently this, this lobe here is actually there for, rather than just for the sake of it, it's actually there to sort of swirl the, the induction around um, as it comes in. I don't know if it really makes much of a difference to be honest. Anyway, you'll note on this head, that's been shaved off. It's also been recessed further and tidied up it's very, very smooth in there. The effect of this is to take the chamber size itself, if you were to fill it up with liquid, which is how it's measured, from 21.4 cc, giving you about 10 to 1 um, compression ratio for your standard uh, mini, let's say Cooper, uh, Rover Cooper, to 29.5 cc. Much, much bigger area in there. The effect is that it's lower the compression ratio. Now that sounds counterintuitive, but of course we're turboing this. And you need a lower compression ratio um, within the cylinder in order to not have desiccation. So that brings us down to be somewhere between 8 and 9 um, to 1 compression ratio. Again, that varies dependent on the thickness of your head gasket and the, uh, the dish in your piston. Now the piston heads themselves have been dished to 10cc. So yeah, that runs me at about 8 uh, to 1 compression, meaning I should be able to run anything from 10 to 20 psi without any problems, uh, any, any worry of detonation. Yielding somewhere between 150 and 180 horsepower, which is, you know, adequate. So uh, let's now move on to the other side. Okay, second place these have been modified, or this has been modified I should say, is the valve's top end. You'll note this has 
um, double valve springs. It's quite hard to see from where you are, um, but there are two springs on each valve, one inside the other. This has two effects. It increases the stiffness. It also reduces valve bounce, which happens at high RPMs. Again, I'm not saying for high RPMs because turbos aren't built for high RPMs, but it's it's just just a good thing. The standard one you'll see the the spacing is closer on the springs um, compared to these. That's another indication of the uh, stiffer spring ratio. They're also offset outwards very slightly compared to these. Now if I'm to uh, grab a set of calipers, let's measure the valve gap. 41.27-ish millimetres, whereas these have been gapped outwards. 42.1. Ish. Not a great deal, but it does mean you can get a bigger valve in the gap. Something I'll also mention at this point is, because this has been modified to such a point, it can't have hardened valve seats fitted. So I've got to use lead additive at all times. Yeah, it's a pain, but it's not a daily car. Let's have a look at the back now, shall we? A very important place. Right then, the last place they've been modified, which is what you would generally call porting and polishing, is the actual ports themselves. They are massive in comparison to the standard ones. So let's measure these up, shall we? So, exhaust ports are width 23.7 millimetres, whereas modified 27 millimetres. Intake vertically because they are weird uh, sort of oblong things on these twenty nine point one versus modified thirty three point four huge amount more um, volume there cross sectionally uh, something I can't actually show you from here very easily is inside the the areas where the the valve um, stem seals if you like are oh, no the valve guides that's the word valve guides the area around those has been has been sculpted out inside to, to make the area in here incredibly smooth whereas in here there's a big lump around the gal valve guide so uh, yeah you might be able to just see about the difference in size between these hopefully so that's heads um in crap now. Yeah, so that's heads. Next off, I want to go over the carb and the turbo itself. The main event. That thing is the whole secret to making big power from a mini. We'll come to that next week. Thanks. <laughs>